Tomorrow all the things were gone I'd work for all my life And I had to start again With just my children and my wife I thank my lucky stars To be living here today Cause the flag still stands for freedom And they can't take that away From the lakes of Minnesota To the hills of Tennessee Across the plains of Texas From sea to shining sea From Detroit down to Houston And New York to L.A. Where there's pride in every American heart And it's time we stand and say
So in uh, we have a tie for third with Noah Kiros and Eliseo Guzman. Um, in, in second place is Kevin Zuniga. Zuniga. In first place, undefeated from El Sol Academy, Isaiah Berber. Again, I want to thank all the parents and all the house and staff that came here to help us today. Um, we have announcements as far as what city events. We also have our chess club sites online. And also thank Elso Academy and also Davis for providing players for today. Okay, thank you, and I hope you guys had a fun time. Give all the, all the players, all your kids, a big round of applause. They were so good.
economy in Santa Ana is thriving thanks to neighbors and residents who are shopping in Santa Ana. Shop local, shop Santa Ana. We encourage all our residents to invest in their community and support local businesses. Shop local, shop Santa Ana. Welcome to downtown Santa Ana, where you have beautiful art galleries, gorgeous jewelry boutiques, and at every corner you have amazing entertainment. Shop small, shop local, shop Santa Ana. Santa Ana has many museums, parks, and other attractions that are guaranteed for family fun. Come and experience all that Santa Ana has to offer. Shop local, shop Santa Ana. Whether you're interested in the taste of Europe or an experience in Cuban, Greek, Japanese, or other international cuisine, Santa Ana offers you a taste of the world. Shop local, shop Santa Ana. Shopping local supports our community. The revenue right, that's why I keep my dollars in Santa Ana to sustain our youth programs. Shop local, shop Santa Ana. Santa Ana, or as others like to call it, downtown Orange County, provides a wide range of culinary experiences, wonderful educational activities, as well as authentic and trendy retail. Santa Ana, the heart of the OC.
there's a lot of great ideas that that can be a benefit to the community, but it cannot be possible if you don't have leaders with vision and leaders with commitment and tenacity to get things done. It's not every day that council members, seven of them that have different needs that can come together and approve um, 332, $332,000 to construct this wonderful exercise park that's going to have a drinking fountain, outside gym equipment, a, uh, a decomposed granite walkway, a river rock dry stream bed, lighting, drought tolerant landscape because of the need of water. It'll still be very beautiful. Six foot wrought iron fence and a bike rack. And you know, one of the champions early on, even before she got to the council about health, is the councilwoman that represents this ward. And that's Councilwoman Michelle Martinez. So please help me welcome Councilwoman Martinez. I want to thank our, uh, our council. They, they couldn't be here today, but I'm here representing uh, my colleagues, and you know, I certainly represent this ward. And I'll tell you that um, this wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for our staff. I'll tell you that we have champions within our staff that want to move us in the right direction. And so I want to thank our executive director, Gerardo Moet, Jeannie Jurado, Ron Ono. You know, our Parks and Rec staff have been there from the very beginning. They just needed the leadership from the top and really set the right policy so they can do the right things. And you know, the council came together and realized the importance of really bringing a community together and bringing the amenities and the necessities for a community like this. And I want to thank the Sacred Organization. I see Apolli not here. But I also want to thank, before Sacred came about, Latino Health Access has been here for over 20 plus years. And um, I, I, I want to thank them because when, before I was even in a council member and I was contemplating and running, I had a great relationship with America Bracho. America Bracho has known me since I was 15 years old. And, and she shares that story. And I'll tell you that as the years progress, um, and, and I, I decided to, to um, run for office at the age of 24 and, and started campaigning, uh, she always put, put that in my ear, that health was very important and, and the resistance of the city and how, what they were trying to do. And so I took it upon myself when I got elected to be a champion of health, but to be a champion for people that were not provided the voice at City Hall. And this is what this really is about. It's about now bringing voices together. Uh, at, at one point in time, many years ago, you wouldn't see a polinad or folks at Sacred on the eighth floor. They weren't allowed up there. And today, we see them more so than anyone else. So, so that's a testament that things are changing at City Hall and that we're listening to all people, all walks of life here in the city of Santa Ana to better this community. I want to thank our explorers. I know recently they just won uh, some recognition. And so I want to thank you guys for being here and being partners of our park and, rec and, park and recreation uh, a ground opening here. But there's a part, there's a correlation here when we talk about health and we talk about public safety. We need to work together hand in hand because people are not going to want to come to this exercise park if they don't feel safe. People are not going to want to go off to our community center or everything else that we do in regards to public health if, if, it's, if it's not safe. And so we need to continue to work with our police department so that our families could appreciate and share the great opportunities that we're providing for all of you here. One, two, three. Para la ciudad de Santana es importante porque es parte de su desarrollo eh, y para la comunidad es importante porque nuestros niños ya no van a estar en cuatro paredes, sino van a tener un lugar donde puedan hacer ejercicio y no tengan obesidad. Eh, es importante para su salud y para el bienestar de toda la ciudad, comunidad. Eh, anteriormente ya no, no se contaba con espacios abiertos para la comunidad en general, 
pero hoy en día nos están escuchando y este es un ejemplo de, de eso que estamos pidiendo. Well, one, as you know, in this area, the zip code 92701 was uh, very park poor. And today, with the leadership of the council and our city staff, we've been able not only to bring a community center to the Garfield Elementary School that will provide uh, exercise and leisure activities, but here now in this site, we'll be able to provide an exercise equipment. And, and again, uh, people who want to ride their bikes over here can do that as well. And, we're, and so I think uh, it is very important for this community, one, because we all know that in the Latino community, type 2 diabetes has plagued our community. And one thing that I know as I've walked and I talked to our residents, they've always asked that they needed outdoor activities because we have, it's a very dense community here, many apartments. And in the, those apartments, you were unable to play within the uh, structure. And so now that they will be able to either come out right across the street and come here starting April and utilize the exercise equipment and be fit. Um, open space and joint use has been very important to this community and so we heard them loud and clear and um, we made a commitment to providing as much park and open space and joint use here in this um, 92701 because it was the um, um, mo most park, poor park uh, area in, in, in the entire city and so now we're very fortunate that we're increasing our park space here with the joint use with the school district and then here with a property of the city of Santa Ana. Here at the Santa Ana History Room, we're committed to fostering an interest in local history by collecting, preserving, and making available materials of enduring historical value related to the development of the city of Santa Ana. You can discover your community's rich history, contribute to its preservation, and become part of the history to come. History is more than just the past. It's alive all around us, just waiting to be discovered. So come check us out at the Santa Ana Public Library and start your own journey.
día camina la viquina, la gente se pone a murmurar. Dicen que tiene una pena, dicen que tiene una pena que le hace llorar. Altanera, gracias a Dios, no pasa, no permite más que no Bienvenida a la primavera. Welcome to the spring. This is the second time we're doing this. This is la segunda vez que estamos haciendo Plaza Primavera. Se va va a haber actividades, uh, música, pan dulce hasta las siete. And um, in the we're going to have activities and music, live music, and pan dulce. And the event will end at seven. Y la razón que se pueden hacer estos programas para la comunidad es por el apoyo de nuestros líderes. The reason that we're able to do these programs for the community is because of the support from our leaders. We're very fortunate today. Tenemos la gran fortuna to have our councilwoman, uh, our council member Angie Amesqua here and she wants to come and say hi, council member. Thank you, Gerardo. Gracias, Gerardo. Me da mucho gusto estar aquí con ustedes un poquito esta tarde, celebrando el inicio de la primavera. A mí me gusta mucho ver eventos como este, donde las familias se pueden reunir y pasar un rato muy agradable. La ciudad está haciendo estos eventos cada casi cada mes, ¿verdad, Gerardo? Cada mes y estamos muy orgullosos de eso. I'd like to welcome everyone to our Plaza Primavera. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here today. Uh, I'm really happy to that the city is bringing events like this uh, periodically about every month uh, where families can come and spend a good time here in our beautiful downtown. Um, today I had also an event at the zoo earlier, so if anybody needs to go out there and, and see the new exhibit, we have some ocelots in the Santa Ana Zoo. Uh, estaba diciendo que en el zoológico de Santa Ana acaban de abrir una nueva exhibición uh, de unos gatitos uh, originarios de Brasil para también que disfruten ahí con sus familias y sus niños. Uh, I hope everyone has a great time and thank you. Las noches sin ti Agranda mi soledad A veces están a punto de irte a buscar Dime qué cosa me hiciste que no te puedo Um, it's important for youth to come to events like this. One is so that they could see other youth uh, expressing their talents, their abilities. In fact, my daughter's performing tonight, so I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, we have behind us right now the uh, band. Um, and, and it's just, again, fosters that sense of pride in, in Santa Ana, in our city. Um, and I think they're able to see people giving back and then hopefully inspire them to do the same, give back and celebrate uh, the sense of community and just the beauty that is the city of Santa Ana.
Um, so it just it just is, is great to see all these beautiful faces up here, uh, out here in the crowd, and these, these wonderful faces that have performed out here. Another round of applause for the, the Saddleback High School Jazz. You guys enjoy that. Se divirtieron con el grupo musical que estuvo aquí de la de la High School uh, uh, Saddleback. Y ahorita vamos a tener un, una, un grupo que es muy especial uh, para mí, el, el, uh, un estudio de baile que se llama VIP Dance Studio. We're going to have VIP Dance Studio uh, uh, coming up and performing. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's a group that I'm particularly uh, uh, fond of because my daughter Anaïs is in that group. So round of applause there for, for Anaïs. Very proud of her. Muy orgulloso uh, de papá de tener a mi niña que, que va a estar, va a estar uh, siendo parte de la presentación. Vamos a seguir celebrando. Let's continue celebrating Plaza Primavera in the beautiful city of Santana. Thank you very much for being here. Pasen buenas tardes. Enjoy. So well. Clap, 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 clap. I'm calling out legends, cheesecakes, and stars. I wanna see legends, cheesecakes, and stars. To the floor, girl. Cause in the secrets of the legends called Jack Study the Suit or a war. Here I come. Everybody wanna be a superstar Riding around in a rental car mm -hmm. I wanna see runway I wanna see old way I wanna see new way I wanna see you say Got tracks on with Saint Laurent Gotta kiss myself, I'm so pretty I'm too hot, hot and sweet Call the police and the firemen I'm too hot Make a dragon want to retire, man, I'm too hot You say my name, you know who I am, I'm too hot And my band by that one, break a dance Girl, sent you hallelujah Girl, sent you hallelujah Girl, sent you hallelujah Cause Uptown Punk don't give it to you So hot, you know that it's not hot Que no vale más pena Si sigo siendo de todo De mi alma this is one of the only family oriented activities that we have left in the community. We need to continue to strengthen that. As you can see behind me, families are taking advantage of it. They're bringing not only the children, but the grandparents, the entire family. And to me, that's the fabric of our community. And when we're able to build a very strong foundation, all the changes that we need to build in the community will follow suit and really start with programs like this. <laughs> Tócala, tócala, tócala con mucho son Toca guitarra, toca palillo Toca la flauta, toca el tambor Tócala, 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 tócala palma Por sevillana, baila gitana Con ese buen de español Toca la guitarra española Va, la guitarra va Corteja de castañuela Tócala, tócala, suena la laita Tócala, tócala
me, it's a firm believer that it takes a community to raise a child, which means it's everybody within the community has a role and a responsibility that they have to roll up their sleeves and do their part as well, which doesn't mean just the adults. It means everybody on that spectrum, from grandmother all the way down to the infant as well. beautiful things about Santa Ana we have a very diverse community and when we have opportunities such as this to bring our community together it, it's a fun thing it's, it's very important um, to be able to foster this sense of community of celebration uh, richness and culture and that's what we're seeing here tonight uh, families kids everybody coming together and having a great time in this beautiful city <laughs>
When looking at Santa Ana, one can see a bustling city with great history and opportunity. At every turn, one is able to explore and venture into a rich and diverse background. Through careful cultivation, local businesses have been able to grow and flourish along this beautiful city. Come with us as we peer into the history of several local Santa Ana shops. Originally named Orange County Title Company, First American was founded by Charles Edward Parker in 1889. Through careful development, the business grew and became one of the first companies in California to issue insurance. By 1968, the company rebranded itself as First American Title and expanded its entrepreneurial endeavors to meet the needs of an ever-changing community. Currently serving people in over 70 countries, First American has become one of the largest title insurance companies in the world. With an unfaltering commitment to customers, the company continues to use elements like innovative and progressive leadership to provide unparalleled service. From the dreams of a visionary, First American Title is the picture of an ideal company. Wealth, strength, ambition. All of this from a small company that started in Santa Ana all those years ago. Opened in 1955, R&R Western has been in the business of selling Western wear and accessories to the diverse Santa Ana community. Located in the heart of downtown Santa Ana, owner Raymond Rangel offers a wide selection of boots, buckles, cowboy hats, and other finely crafted apparel. Special items like handcrafted straw and felt hats, exotic wallets, and both domestic and international boots are readily available. Through a long and storied history, R&R Western has seen many changes. During the 70s, Raymond's business weathered a fire that devastated downtown Santa Ana. Committed to his business and city, Raymond returned to the area after it was completely restored. Today, Raymond Wrangled is 85 years old and still owns the slickest Western apparel shop this side of downtown Santa Ana. One of the oldest Mexican restaurants built in Orange County, Sariana's Tamale Factory was founded in 1939. Just off of this street, Sariana's is a small yet charming family business that caters to those seeking fresh, authentic Mexican food. Before venturing out to the fashionable downtown area, shoppers can stop by for a quick bite and partake in the delicious experience of sopes and tortas. While there are many delicious offerings, the restaurant is best known for their classic pork tamales and hard shell crispy tacos. With a large and ever-growing patronage, Sariana's Tamale Factory is an historic city landmark that won't soon be replaced. For over 75 years, this restaurant has been and will continue to bring family and friends together.
Known as the water jaguar in Brazil, this voracious hunter is called Lobo de Rio, the river wolf. Found in the rivers of South America, 
giant river otters are voracious hunters, eating up to nine pounds of fish a day. They've even been known to kill and eat anacondas, the world's heaviest snakes, along with caiman, a type of freshwater crocodile. The giant river otter is the world's largest otter and grows to be an amazing six feet long. Their webbed feet and wide flat tails propel them swiftly through the water in search of food or a new place to explore. Their swimming underwater is graceful and effortless. They live in large family groups and are active, playful, and very vocal. And they are endangered. Giant river otters are the rarest otters with only a few thousand left in the world. Their biggest threats are from people who hunt them for their pelts and overfish the rivers, leaving them little food to survive. Zoos across the world are working together to save this endangered species, but very few zoos have them in the United States. Their playful antics, loud calls, and non-stop eating make them a favorite with zoo guests. The city of Santa Ana has committed $1.4 million towards the construction of the giant river otter exhibit at the Santa Ana Zoo. By placing them in Amazon's Edge, our beautiful exhibit with its thundering waterfall, our visitors' first animal encounter will be full of energy, sound, and action. The exhibit will have a state-of-the-art water filtration system so our guests can see the otters through the underwater viewing window and the otters will have crystal clear water to live happy and healthy lives. Clean water is vital to life so we'll teach our guests about the importance of conserving water and using it wisely for ourselves and the animals around us. The city of Santa Ana has a way to make this vision a reality. An additional $600,000 is needed to complete the project. Help us bring the amazing giant river otter to its new home at the Santa Ana Zoo and allow zoo visitors the chance to enjoy this unique and beautiful creature. By making purchases with local businesses and vendors, more of your money stays close to home. This in turn supports our parks, recreation centers, libraries, and other services and development that enrich and improve the lives of Santa Ana residents. When you shop in Santa Ana, you are contributing to a culture of shared opportunity and progress. Santa Ana's youth commissioners will take you on a tour of some of their favorite businesses in the community. Our city has a strong presence of Latino culture. And what better way to express that love and pride than through a warm cup of coffee? Located in the heart of downtown Santa Ana, Cafe Calacas is a great place for people from all walks of life to come together for Mexi Fraps and Pan Dulce. Catch them early in the day and you might get a hold of some chilaquilas for a hearty breakfast. Cafe Calacas offers a rich variety of savory foods and refreshments that will make your mouth water. Along with delicious dishes, the restaurant is an excellent place to hang out with your friends and converse over great food. It's my favorite way to start the day. Let the Dow Records has a wide selection of music, but I always come down for the latest hip-hop releases. With a superb knowledge in music, the owner keeps his shop stocked with new and used records while providing a friendly atmosphere for all. If you have a passion for discovering new music and you haven't been to Left of the Dow yet, I highly recommend a visit. Left of the Dow Records also offers CDs, cassettes, shirts, and posters. There's a lot going on in this little record shop and it's incredibly fun to partake in. It's important to support local businesses and I like supporting good art as well. You could say I have become something of a regular. Don't miss out on the great small businesses like Left of the Dial Records in Santa Ana. VIP Dance Studios where I come to unwind. I feel like the instructors here care about making Santa Ana kids better dancers. They offer a great selection of exercise classes for anybody looking for a fun and supportive environment. I have been practicing at VIP Dance Studio for two years, and it has been a rewarding experience. I'm so grateful to have had the chance to broaden my skills and meet so many warm and ambitious people. This place is where kids can come to build their confidence and become well-rounded young adults. VIP Dance Studio is a warm environment, and it brings me closer to my community. My favorite place to eat after school is Las Tortugas Grill. With the most delicious tortas around, this is a frequent hotspot that I and many others love to dine at. Since it's a food truck, 
you're able to walk around the back and see all of the fabulous employees working the grills in one well-managed space. Coming to Santa Ana, everyone should experience the wide and diverse food trucks we have to offer. In my opinion, Las Tortugas is one of the best food trucks around. I would personally recommend anyone looking for good food to give them a visit. You cannot afford to miss this little known city treasure. Whether you're in the mood for unique and savory cuisine, the opportunity to expand your record collection, or to make new connections and explore the city, Santa Ana has a wide variety of businesses that inspire and invite excitement. It's important to be mindful of our purchasing decisions and remember to invest money back into our community. Investing in local businesses helps create a thriving city based on shared opportunity. That's why the Santa Ana Youth Commission supports the citywide effort to remind residents to shop local and shop Santa Ana.
esquinita de mi hueso que han caído los esquemas de mi vida. and welcome to our annual State of the City Breakfast with the Mayor, the Honorable Miguel Polito. I am Paula Garcia Young, Chair of the Santa Ana Chamber of Commerce and Board of the Directors and the Banker with Chase Bank. Would you all please stand as the colors are presented by the Santa Ana Police Department Honor Guard and please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance led by Jessica Sanchez from Girl Scout Troop 2543 the singing of our national anthem by Officer Judy Valdez from the Santa Ana Police Department, and the invocation led by Pastor Lee DeLeon from Templo Calvario Community Development Corporation. We ask that we all remain standing until the honor guard has left the room. Ready? Begin. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the That was wonderful. I'd like to quickly say that Templo Calvario, the church I pastor at, we're celebrating next month 80 years in Santa Ana. Now, uh, Mayor, maybe you can talk to Dan about this, but it's technically 90 years. So it's, uh, it's been an ongoing battle between us, but it's been a blessing to serve Santa Ana. Truly, it has been a blessing to serve Santa Ana. I'm going to ask you to join with me at the end, at the close of the prayer, with the words, and God bless Santa Ana. You want the blessing of God on Santa Ana, don't you? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. 
Thank you, Father, so much for our mayor and uh, the wonderful city council that serves this city, Lord. We thank you for their service. We thank you for the city manager and the staff, Lord, that daily uh, provides many different services for this community. We thank you for the business community of Santa Ana, the jobs they create, the jobs they provide, and community leaders, Lord, and faith leaders in this city that, that commit so much to our city. This morning we pray for this gathering, pray that you would bless it with your presence, Lord. And uh, we pray for the leadership that's here today, that you uh, go with them this year. And bless this year, this coming year in the city of Santa Ana. And now everybody join with me and say, and God bless Santa Ana. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Enjoy your breakfast and conversation. We will start our program in a few minutes. Thank you. get that refill of coffee. We have two coffee stations, you know. So some of you that are sitting over here, don't go all the way over there. It makes no sense. Well, I just want to kind of re-welcome all of you this morning. I'm Dave L.A., President and CEO of your Santa Ana Chamber of Commerce. We're proud to uh, help sponsor and put this event on with our uh, illustrious mayor each each year. I think this is our 19th year of doing this. Yeah, ninth. Yeah, get round of applause. And Miguel's been here every year, which is great. So I want to thank all of you. Would you also? I want to thank Peter Keller and uh, Ann She. Where are they here? Just where's Peter at? Okay, Peter. Thank you. Thank you for hosting this this morning too. Really appreciate it. Um, now, I have the kind of the honor and the duty of recognizing a lot of special guests. So, I, you know, which is all of you, really, okay? But all the guests, I have, to, all these pages have people on this that I have to recognize. So we'll be here for the next hour and a half just recognizing guests, that kind of thing. But um, let me take a, a few minutes, and uh, if we could kind of hold our applause, and if I miss someone, see my assistant, blame her. No, kidding. I won't throw her under the bus. She's doing a great job for us. But anyway, if we miss somebody, we'll give you a second at the end to, to be introduced. But uh, this is kind of alphabetical order, but, you know, if, if, if you don't hear your name, you'll, you'll probably hear it by the end of the, 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 the list of things, too. But if you just stand and just, or, or, or raise your hand, but let's save our applause for the very end. But I just want to recognize a few folks that are here with us today, okay? Claudia Alvarez, from our, a trustee from Rancho uh, San Diego Community College. Once again, you followed instructions. Perfect. Perfect. Miguel, we're going to be here till 11 o'clock at this rate. You know, okay. Uh, council member David Benavides. David, all right. Uh, Cheryl Brothers, Fountain Valley Mayor, City Council Mayor, Cheryl. Cheryl, I think you've been here for several years with us. Many. All right. Good. Uh, Sergio Contreras, Mayor Pro Tem of Westminster. Sergio, thank you. Uh, Lou Correa, former California Senator. Where's Lou at? I saw him earlier. Oh, he was here. Okay. Uh, Andrew Doe, our supervisor, 1st District. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, and then representing uh, the Mexican consulate, uh, Marco Ferrari. Where's Marco? Right over here. Thank you. Mike Hennessy from OCTA. Is Mike here? Okay. Uh, Cecile Inglias, trustee from Santa Ana Unified School District. Cecilia. All right. Steve Jones, OC, a TA, and Garden Grove Council. Steve here. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Peter, you can raise your hand again. Okay, from Bowers and stuff. Okay, great. Michelle Martinez, City Council. Michelle, thank you. Uh, Rick Miller from our St. Anna sc uh, School District. Rick, thank over here. Uh, Al Murray from Tustin Council and OCTA. Thank you, Al. Um, Rob Richardson, trustee, St. Anna Unified School Board. Where's Rob? I saw him earlier. Where are you at, Rob? Okay, over here. We put you way over there. There's a reason. 
Uh, Vince Sarmiento, uh, Santa Ana Pro, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Where's Vince? Thank you, Vince. Uh, Tim Shaw, OCTA, and City of La Habra. Tim? And then is, where's Ann at? She's on the Board of Governors. Okay. Uh, then Jose Solario, Rancho uh, Community College Board, uh, Trustee. All right, thank you. And then uh, Daniel Strupa, Chancellor Chapman University. Is Daniel here? Thank you, Dan. We met before. Yeah. And then Tom Tate, Mayor of uh, Anaheim. All right, Tom, thank you. Uh, representing Assemblyman Tom Daly's office, Avelino Valencia. And then uh, representing Congresswoman Loretta Sanchez, Beatrice Mendoza. Where's Beatrice? Way in the back here. And representing Assemblyman Ta Travis Allen, Colin Edwards. Okay, now, who did I miss? I'm introducing Antonio in a few minutes, so I'm, I'm, you okay? So, you know, and the mayor is going to be introduced, so I'm not introducing those guys. Okay? But did I miss anybody? Is there anyone that wants me to introduce them? <laughs> okay. So we're good. Okay, I'm not getting fired today because of that. All right. So the State of the City breakfast would not be possible without the generous support of our awesome sponsors. I want to recognize a few of them today. All our sponsors are, are listed in the program, the, the one-page program you have. Uh, but I'm going to highlight just a few of them. First of all, I want to thank LCPAs. Uh, for being our patron event sponsor, and that's uh, Ed Lieber. Where's Ed at? Ed, stand up. Okay? Ed's one of our outstanding board members. I've Ed, known Ed for 20 years, and they are our patron sponsor for today. Thank you, Ed. <laughs> and then I'd like to recognize our corporate sponsors, AT&T, Care Ambulance, Crevier Classic Cars, Concordia University, Vanguard University, and Wear Disposal Madison Materials, which you thank those corporate sponsors. And then we have many event sponsors, nonprofit sponsors as well. They're listed in the program and, the, and also we've had their logos and names uh, on the screen throughout this, the, the morning. In your program and on the screen we have listed our annual event champions. These are uh, event champions that support the various events of the chamber. They're listed there. And then we have our president circle from this past year uh, listed. These are uh, companies individuals that support our Chamber of Commerce above and beyond event sponsorships, that kind of thing. And then you will notice today the hot off the press, I mean this was delivered last night at 5 o'clock, the annual community guide. So please take this annual community guide, tremendous information here about our great city of Santa Ana, some great supporters, listing of chamber uh, uh, activities and uh, 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 businesses as well and take that with you. I want to thank Tony Hatch who could not be here today and Ron uh, uh, Hopkins for their work on that project to make that uh, available to us today. So take those. If you want some extras, let us know. We, we, we made a couple extras. Okay. Finally, I'd like to recognize uh, your outstanding Santa Ana Chamber Board of Directors that are here today that are led by Cong uh, Chairwoman Paula Garcia Young and just the best group of uh, 41 board members that you could ask for. So uh, if you're a board member, we're not going to read off your names, but, you know, Vicki and others, please stand. Our Santa Ana Chamber Board. You know, people say, hey, Dave, why so many board members? I said, it takes that many to kind of, you know, corral me, that kind of thing, and, you know, that kind of stuff. So anyway, it's a great board. In closing, it is our privilege as your Chamber of Commerce to serve you, the business community, as a resource, connector, and advocate for a thriving business community here in Santa Ana and the surrounding region. Our focus is on three main issues, business and economic development, legislative advocacy, and community involvement. If you're not involved with us as a member, please consider being a part of our family here that serves Santa Ana in helping build a positive business community here. Now, I would like to introduce a very special guest who's going to introduce our outstanding mayor. Would you welcome to the platform from the great sister city of Los Angeles, former mayor Antonio Villarosa. Antonio, please. Thank you. Thank you for being here. You're making it good. Are you kidding? Well, thank you for that very long introduction. <laughs> I wrote every word myself. 
No, thank you very much. I was saying uh, uh, as I walked up to the podium that uh, it, what a great event. What a great venue, a beautiful museum. I hope I get a few minutes to go, go through it today and see so many friends here. Uh, it's great to be here with all of you. And uh, when your mayor uh, asked me, and first of all, let me thank all of the members of the chamber here. Um, you've been doing this uh, for a few years now, and uh, you mentioned uh, that the mayor has been here at every single one of them. I think it's a testament to you all, to this uh, chamber, a vibrant chamber, that over the years, and as you say, your sister city uh, to the north, watching Remember, I go back a few years now. I used to be Speaker of the California State Assembly in the 90s and a council member and a mayor. And I've watched uh, this great uh, city grow and thrive and revitalize in no small part uh, because of the businesses, both small and big, here in Santa Ana, represented by your organization. So let's give them a big hand. Chamber of Commerce, who are hosting us today. Um, when I got a call from my friend, your mayor, uh, Mayor Polito, uh, if I'd be willing to come uh, to a state of the city, I said, absolutely. I didn't find out until I think late last night or this morning that I actually was going to introduce him and say a few words. Um, all the better, uh, frankly. Uh, I was just coming as a fan. I, and I mean that. I was just coming as a fan. I thought, uh, I didn't know if we were, my state of the cities used to be in an auditorium. I didn't have a nice breakfast for everybody. I, I like this. Uh, but, you know, so everybody comes into this big giant auditorium and, you know, all the cameras are there and all the rest of it. And I, I thought I was going to be sitting in some dark room somewhere. And instead, here we are in this open, sunlit, beautiful uh, inside courtyard area uh, with all of you. And so uh, to my friend, first, uh, let me thank you for the honor of being able to introduce you today. Uh, thank you for inviting me. It's not quite what I expected, um, but I'm very, very happy to be here. And I wanted to come. Because frankly, uh, your mayor and I have known each other for some 20 odd years. First got elected to the state assembly in 1994. Uh, I think just about the time you became mayor. And of course, you know, you kind of hear about this Miguel Polito and Santa Ana just got elected and all the things he wants to do. And I'm just getting started and, you know, go on and. To become speaker, and of course, when I was uh, speaker, I looked uh, to the mayors, frankly. The mayors of cities like Anaheim and uh, your uh, great sister city here, Tom Tate, great to see you. And, um, you know, I looked to the mayors, frankly. Uh, I wasn't mayor yet, but you kind of knew intuitively those were the people with their hands uh, in the ground. You know, their sleeves rolled up, getting things done. And early on, uh, Miguel Polito was one of those people that I would go to on so many uh, issues over the years. So to watch him as he first gets elected, and, you know, I, I'm a native Angelino, third generation American and Mexican descent. I've been coming to Santa Ana since I was a kid, right? I mean, got family out. Well, I didn't have family, but, you know, the, the close relationships that we have across the Southern California area. So watching, ah, and the congressman is here today, congressman-to-be, I hope, Luke Correa, let's give him a hand. They introduced you a bit ago, and I just probably had to get on that phone and working his tail off, and it's great to see you. Uh, and... Uh, I can tell you uh, that back then, watching this city grow, watching the revitalization of downtown, seeing the businesses uh, come here and thrive, 
uh, see the business licenses, you know, that got approved here. You, you, you couldn't help but marvel. And you know, when you come from a, you know, I go on to, to run for mayor in 2001 and didn't quite get over the top. And my friend uh, Miguel Polito was with me there all along the way. And uh, then joined the city council and kind of come to him and say, you know, like, what do you do with these jobs? You know, when you're in the legislature, you do kind of ephemeral, big thinking, you know, esoteric kind of things. Oftentimes, when you become a council member or a mayor, you actually got to, you know, it's where the rubber hits the road. You actually got to do things, right? I tell, I mean, with all respect to my friends in the legislature, <laughs> I do respect y'all. But, you know, it's, it's, more, it's more of a debating kind of a thing, right? So then you come here and I, you know, I, 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 he was one of the people that I went to. And then I run for mayor and ask the mayor, can I have your support? And got it and uh, become mayor of Los Angeles. And once again, you know, you realize when you're in jobs like that, that uh, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, that there are other people who have done things and long before you and in his case by then I think 12 years before me so you go to him and you ask him for advice and I did that again and again and again later uh, I run for president of the US Conference of Mayors I was the president of all the mayors in the country and first guy I go to and ask for support was Miguel Polito but not only for support to get there, but to kind of figure out what did the organization need because he had already been working in that organization for a decade, maybe 12 years by the time I got involved. And so this has been a relationship, almost a symbiotic one uh, over the years and one of mutual respect. So when I say that I'm excited to be here, happy to be here, I really am. I'm happy to be here because uh, you have a mayor and, and let me tell you something, I was mayor for eight years, and you all are in the uh, metropolitan area, so you saw the news, I got beat up a lot, you know, people walked away, you know, half the people mad at you, the other half not, you know, that was after eight years, 58% approval rating, whatever, you know, so half the people weren't happy. To be mayor for 22 years, I mean, come on, everybody, <laughs> to run again every two years? You got to have done something. You got to have done something, everybody. It doesn't just happen. And um, for me, I know what happened. This city has thrived. Uh, it's revitalized under his leadership. I benefited greatly, which is why I wanted to be here, from his stewardship, his friendship, and his support while I was president of the Conference of Mayors. And nationally, what I like to end with, because I think sometimes you read the paper, you read about the things he's doing here, you don't realize the impact that he had on the Obama administration during the recession uh, to, for those Buy America bonds or, uh, that we had and, and fighting to make sure that they came to Santa Ana and not just you know Chicago, New York, LA, right? Making sure that they got their fair share. Uh, and the same was true with America Fast Forward, which I led uh, an effort to reward cities that were putting up their own money for transportation, the man right alongside uh, was your mayor. So we should all uh, be very proud of a man who, when he said, I want your vote, understood that it meant uh, that he had to keep his promises and he had uh, to move uh, with you all this city ahead. Please help me in welcoming uh, your mayor, Mayor Miguel Pulido. Thank you. Thank you, Antonio, for that very uh, kind uh, introduction. And, um, uh, you know, for some of those stories, and I tell you, there's, uh, you know, more stories about some of the things that we did, especially at the U.S. Conference of Mayors. I remember one time being with Senator Feinstein, and we're all in there asking her for money for the American Recovery Act. 
and she just says, look, you've got an hour, go figure out the language, figure out what you want me to put in the bill, and then come back. So I remember going with Antonio and some of the other mayors that were there, the Big Ten mayors, and you know, we basically said, look, some of the money has to be formula, some of the money has to be just prorated, but you know, we want it now, and it was three and a half billion dollars, and Feinstein did it. She took our language, sent it off to a room where they're having a committee meeting in some hotel, and lo and behold, here comes the language, and next day it gets approved by the U.S. Senate, and then soon thereafter, cities across America began to benefit from that, that money. Uh, it was three and a half billion for the energy component of the American Recovery Act. So thank you, Antonio, for your friendship, for your support, and for all the public service that you've done throughout the years. Thank you very much. You know, there's so much to say here today that I'm going to give you an overview of the state of the city. But just keep in mind that for everything I mentioned, there's another 15 or 20 things that I could have mentioned under the same uh, umbrella because things really, really are incredibly vibrant right now. Um, I want to start off by talking a little bit about some of the development uh, that's going on in the city and some of the development that I think is going to come. Uh, one of the most recent things that's occurred is that the Elks, um, you know, recently, uh, you know, the Elks property out there where the Saddleback Inn used to be was recently purchased by Wormers, and, and they want to do some retail and some housing out there, um, you know, look for some projects, and of course this will be not too far from, you know, our friends at Local 652, and I know that a lot of this work is going to help a lot of laborers and a whole lot of folks, and I'll keep talking about that because that's a recurring theme. Also at 1901 East 1st Street, if you look at a project there, it's a 254-unit project that is, not, that is now being completed and, and moving forward. Um, the City Council recently approved the Heritage. It's a huge project. I believe it was a unanimous vote. And, uh, you know, that's like, uh, you know, 12,021 units over uh, on the border with our good uh, neighboring friends in Tustin and right on the border with Irvine as well. Um, we have the depot, which is another project uh, right across from the you know, Santa Ana uh, uh, Regional Transportation Center. And the reason I want to point out that project is that it's a transit-oriented development project. It actually got money from the state, about $3.2 million, uh, enabling that project to come into reality. And it's currently under construction, and it's going to be just another wonderful uh, project. Um, very close to here on North Main Street. Uh, 2700 North Main, the press company, just purchased the old time temperature building, remember, where it, where it kind of says the temperature and the time? Um, well, that is going to not only be renovated, uh, but they're looking at building some housing around it right next to Main Place. And uh, I see Chase McLaughlin here from the Sagerstrom family, and, um, you know, they're very active in Main Place. But the reason I want to mention the, the, the press project is that I also know, and I'll come back to this, but they're talking to USC. UAC is looking at doing a charter school potentially within that building here in the city. You know, very, very, uh, uh, like a high school. It's like a, a charter school, prep high school affiliated with USC. And so, you know, as you just look at everything, I mean, I was asking my mayor pro tem earlier, Vince Sarmiento, what, you know, what's the message? And the message is easy. The message is all the amazing, exciting things that are going on here in the city. Because everywhere you look, you can almost close your mind and just look around and, and, and things are happening. Uh, at Main Place, for example, I don't know when the last time we went to Main Place is, but they're doing a wonderful job. It's hard to find parking now. It used to be that there was a lot of parking at Main Place all the time. You never worried about that. Now we have to have more and more valet parking and, 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 and other parking needs. Uh, uh, you know, that are met through valet parking because it is packed. Sometimes you spend time going up and down the aisles trying to find a place, but there's wonderful new, uh, you know, facilities and restaurants like Panini's and, and you know, and, and, and the 24-hour fitness and, you know, you look around and, you know, Lucille's Barbecue and it just goes on and on what's happening there. And as you look at all these things rising, all these things getting better, um, I do believe that at some point soon, um, you know, don't bet against Mike Hara. Every time people ask me, and Mike's here in the room, they say, you know, is one Broadway plaza going to happen? Because it's been like 17 years, Mike, or more? More. 
See, Antonio was talking about how many years I've been mayor. Well, look, some things take a long time. A long time, especially if, if, if you're trying to build this, you know, 37-story high-rise and, and, and you're bringing in tenants and you're dealing with everything else and environmental impact reports and, you know, campaigns because this went on the ballot. But, but look, uh, Mike said that next year, around this time, there's going to be steel going up in the sky. That's correct, right, Mike? He says that is correct. So, look, let's, let's hope... Let's hope that that takes place because it'll be a tribute to perseverance and hard work and not giving up and having a vision and realizing that in order to, uh, you know, have a vision become a reality, um, it does take a lot of hard work. Also, by the way, it takes luck sometimes, you know, timing has to be right. Uh, those that want to, you know, help you out have to be there, but right now I think we're in the right cycle things are looking up uh, on many, many levels, and, and so hopefully one Broadway plaza will become a reality. Uh, other things that are, be, are a reality and becoming a reality are the things that are going in places like the Santa Ana Auto Mall. I don't know if you've been down there lately. If you haven't, go down there and buy a car. Uh, any dealership in Santa Ana buy a car. Um, but, uh, but, but in particular, I know that I, I, I get it wrong sometimes because when I talk about Crevier, they say it used to be that they were the you know, highest, uh, I think, in California or on the West Coast. Now, Al Paradigius has told me that I think um, number one in the United States. We beat some dealership or two dealerships in Florida, and, and so Crevier is, is selling hundreds and hundreds of cars. Um, but also, through the Penske Group, they're bringing in more dealers into the auto mall. Um, you know, we've got, I think, a new Lincoln dealership that's in and a Subaru dealership that's coming in. And, you know, sales tax to the city, which is my favorite part, is $3.7 million just from the auto mall. And, and, and I'm sure that number is going to increase. And so they're just doing a wonderful job. But so are all the other dealers in the city. You know, whether it's a Kia dealership right off the freeway or, or uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, the dealership that we have uh, with Guarantee Chevrolet. Uh, and others, all the numbers are up, and they're, they're up in double digits, anywhere from 25 to 34 percent in that magnitude. Um, and, and, and as we look at things that are happening and how sometimes things happen, here's where I go back to my friend Tony Villaraigosa, because some time ago he said, look, you know, he sits on the board of, uh, 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 of the bank, it's the Bank of California, and they've just bought a building here in Santa Ana, $77 million building down on Main and MacArthur, and uh, they want to relocate their headquarters into Santa Ana. It's going to mean almost a thousand new jobs. Um, it's, it's like a $7.8 billion bank. I know you're on the board because there's like, you know, ads and things along freeways where uh, on billboards where you see Antonio's face sometimes and, 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 and others, and it's for the Bank of California. And so that bank coming to Santa Ana is going to be very significant because it's going to be their, their headquarters buildings. And as we look at new things, and I just think about the south part of the city for a moment, just uh, if you remember uh, right around, uh, you know, like Fairview and MacArthur, there's a shopping center built in the 90s, used to have a Ralph's, Ralph's got a little bit tired, unfortunately they moved out. Well, look, sometimes when things like that happens, it allows for new opportunity. And here the new opportunity is a super opportunity. It's an opportunity named Super King. It's a new uh, a store, a retail store. It's international food. It's, uh, it's, it, it, it's a pe specialty store. I am certain, based on other stores that they have, they have like Sis Stores currently. This is their seventh store. It's going to be a fantastic store. I hope it's number one in their chain, and I hope that we all, you know, you know benefit from that. And, and, and again, a wonderful new addition here to the family uh, in Santa Ana. And as I talk about family and talk about what's going on, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the downtown. Because there was a time when going to the downtown meant you weren't going to be there very long. It meant you weren't going to be there at night. It meant you weren't going to eat there. Um, and it meant most people didn't go there because unless you were a juror and you were forced to go sit there with a the grand jury and then you said, well, what do I do for lunch? Um, you know, you, you wouldn't go there. Today, 
today, there are thousands of people in the downtown. You know, last year I told you that the restaurants were increasing. Well, today I'll tell you there's 72 restaurants in downtown Santa Ana. And they're doing well. It's becoming a real foodie place. It's a little bit hip. All of a sudden you get people from, from L.A. and San Francisco and other cities in Anaheim and Dustin and, and, and Westminster, you know, coming into Santa Ana and Fountain Valley, uh, 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 coming into Santa Ana and saying, hey, we're going down there to hang out. We're doing, going down there because it's cool. We're going down there because it's different. And, and there are things happening that are really, really cool. Like you might go to the um, uh, Day, of the Day, uh, uh, Day of the Dead celebration, where there's so many people in so many streets, it, it, it's just packed. It's just packed. And, you know, not that long ago, we thought six people was a crowd. And, um, and now we think, you know, 50,000 is, is, is just another, another busy day down there. Um, we also have tremendous diversity and variety. You know, you might go to the Yost Theater and all of a sudden see some performers from the Ukraine. You know, performers that you'll never see any other, in any other uh, uh, environment nearby. Or you might see, you know, from Scotland, you know, the Royal, uh, you know, Ballet uh, Company or, or, or theater company from Scotland and they'll be there performing in a local local venue so as the city continues to develop as it continues to morph as it continues to become more and more uh, cosmopolitan we have breweries like there's a new one coming in called the blinking owl it's going to be over by the transportation center and you know they're going to be you know doing everything from the ground up uh, you know creating their own beer and having their own their own restaurant on the premises and, and, and as you look at all this cosmopolitan environment and you look at all the businesses in the city, you know, I think we're doing a good job at trying to keep the balance uh, with our neighborhood associations. We have 52 active neighborhood associations. And for many residents in portions of the city, it's like there's a city within the city. And, and, and you, you still, you know, can have neighborhoods that you know, have, you know, parties and, you know, Christmas parties or they do home tours and they're all linked together by this communication linkages group that we have here and recently, you know, that organization had its 26th anniversary. Just, a, you know, a wonderful uh, milestone and, and I think a testament to all the things that, um, that we're doing here in the city. Um, we also, you know, recently, uh, as, as we looked at the city budget, we passed a budget that had money for capital improvements, uh, you know, $46 million. Um, we have, um, you know, a, a, a budget that seeks to, you know, focus on priorities. And right now, frankly, one of our priorities is public safety. We have many of them, but the city council recently unanimously approved a budget um, actually, I may be wrong on that by one vote, but let's let it go for now. It was almost unanimous. And um, what, what, what it does do is it increases our police department by about 60 positions. Uh, and that's, that's big because we're currently at about 300, which is low. By the end of the year, we hope to be at 360. Um, and in order to give it a little extra push, we even came up with an idea that if we have an extra surplus within the next 12 months beyond what we are projecting right now, we'll put that into hiring additional officers. And, and right now that's something we need to do because between Prop 47 and my friend Governor Jerry Brown doing the realignment, which I disagree with him on because he's letting people out early, and when you let prisoners out early, they tend to go back and do what they were doing before. So cities across California are being impacted by that double whammy. And so more officers in our city jail and everything else that we're doing makes a big difference. And also what I expect is going to make a big difference is going to be uh, Jerry Serrano. There's new leadership within the police association. And Jerry Serrano is their new president. Um, you know, he's very active, he's vibrant, he's engaged, and, and, and he's uh, advocating uh, on behalf of, uh, of the association in order to have a stronger police department here in the city, and that's something uh, we all support. And as we look at the budget, just another component of it, you know, our reserves are, are at, at max, basically. They're at $45 million. And that's a long way from where we were before because we were down as, in the middle of the recession, around 2008, 2009, we were around $3 million. 
So the fact that we have 45 million now in reserve, it's a good thing. On top of that, we have some additional money in a rainy day fund, about four million, four and a half, and then we have the surplus, which uh, again we're allocating for this year, you know, to the uh, to the police. Um, and as we look at, at at the overall condition of the city, and we look at the strength of it, the business licenses are at all time high. I always like to track those because I think it's an indicator. And you know, we used to be in the teens. I remember when it was you know 16 and 17 thousand. Then we got into the 20s. You know, 20 thousand, 21,000. Um, last year, I reported we were right around 28,000. And Michelle Martinez corrected me, and I was off by about 100. And um, but she tracks those things, and it's good that she does. Well, today I've got the exact number, Michelle. It's 29,107. <laughs> So 29,107. Um, Tom's probably thinking how many are in Anaheim and it's, uh, who knows what it is, but it's a lot. 28,000 is a lot. And you know, when you do the state of the city, you ask all sorts of questions you don't normally ask, um, but, but, but they give you the answers and it's good. Um, also, I want to tell you the valuation in town is up by about a billion dollars. It, it's 4.2% uh, up. And of course, with all the projects, all the development that we're doing, it can go up, you know, two to three uh, billion dollars between now and next year, because that's the uh, type of a of a role that we're on. And look, you can't be on a roll, you can't be doing well if you're not doing something, uh, you know, for education. And I think the partnership that we have here in the city between all the educational institutions, and that means, you know, the and I'll tell you the specifics, but it just means everybody. There, there's nonprofits that are working with our schools. There's special charter uh, schools that, uh, uh, that are working with our schools. All sorts of different facets, and it's making a huge difference. Let me just give you a few highlights. Um, uh, at Santa Ana Unified School District, and I know Rob is here, and Rob, you've served many, many years on the school board. How many of you served, Rob? Fourteen. And he's going to retire soon, so let's give Rob an applause. We're giving you an applause for the work that you've done, not because you're retiring, Rob. But, um, but you've done great work. Um, over at Santa Unified, they, uh, you know, at Century High School, um, there's going to be a wonderful thing happening, and that's, uh, that is the fact that there's going to be a new Nicholas Academic Center at, at, at Century High School. And the reason that's significant is we have right now, you know, we have one center across the street from the federal courthouse. We have another NAC at, uh, at Valley, but we don't have, in other parts of the city, we don't have those services and kids aren't going to be able to come in and commute all the time to get there. So the fact that the school district um, has worked out a deal with the Nicholas Academic Center to put together another center at Century High School that literally is going to mean that about 100 kids are going to, you know, per year are going to have a different life. Because, you know, as Superintendent Miller told me, there's certain things a private sector can do better than the public. One of those is the fact that when these kids that are part of the Nicholas Academic Center, when they, when they retire or when they leave school going off into college, the NAC continues to track them. They talk to their parents, they talk to the kids, they stay in touch with them, they make sure they're doing okay, and that's part of why they graduate. Getting to college is one thing. Staying in college and graduating is a different thing. And that's one of the amazing things that the NAC is doing. And what I'd like to do is just for a moment talk about Uriel Oropesa, because he's part of the NAC from, from Valley High School. Um, you know, he's a valedictorian of his class. He's a Gates Millennium Scholar, and he's standing up over there, by the way. And he's going to be attending uh, Notre Dame uh, University in the, in, the, in the fall. So he is just one example of the literally now hundreds and thousands of kids that, that are involved in these, um, in these programs and these efforts. And, and, and for another moment, I just want to talk about Santa High School because it's doing very, very well. And we have Noelle Zarate, who passed the Spanish uh, AP uh, you know, test 
and got 100%. And now you might say, well, maybe she's native, you know, Spanish speaking, so why is that so hard? Well, you know, when's the last time you saw somebody get a perfect score on the English AP test? <laughs> you know? She's one of only 55, uh, you know, scholars nationally, here it says in the world, but it's amazing to, to have done that. Now I, I want to move on to Santa Ana College. We know hey, we have many, many uh, uh, folks here and friends, um, you know, board members, uh, the institution. And I'll tell you, the work that Santa Ana College is doing is amazing because they're, they get into the weeds and early Antonio was talking about what mayors do, how you make things happen because you get into the weeds. Well, they get into the educational weeds. And what I'm talking about is they've, they've formed a partnership with uh, Cal State Fullerton and UC Irvine, and every student that uh, signs up for Santa Ana College their freshman year, they get a laptop computer for free, and they get the first year of tuition for free. It's an amazing accomplishment. Thank you for your work. I want to take also a moment and talk about Modern Day High School because that is a true a jewel here in our city and they don't stop. They're always doing good work and they're more recent. You know, it's, it's like, uh, you know those magicians, they have a box and all of a sudden a bunny keeps coming out. Well, you know, Pat Murphy and others have this magic thing over there because they keep making things happen. The most recent thing they're going to do is they're going to uh, create a new uh, performing arts center. And, um, and, and when you look at Water Day across the board, it's just amazing the, way, the work that they do. Thank you very much for what you do, Pat. Thank you. Orange County High School of the Arts. Um, in a moment, you'll see my sons because they'll be here performing, and, and you know they both went to OSHA. When OSHA first came here, it was hard envisioning what, what it was going to be or do. But I'll tell you that right now, according to the, to the uh, niche, uh, you know, study organization, they're the number two charter school in the state, and nationally, they're number seven uh, in the country, and they're doing things like a sixty million dollar Musco arduous Sagerstrom Center where they have dance and. And, and music and um, uh, science and, and and it's all coming together and it's coming together on many different facets and I want to kind of jump across the street talk about El Sol that is uh, you know an ele elementary charter school and they've been voted number one charter school in the state so you know something going on well early I talked about USC uh, charter prep school um, you know, that's going to be a, a, another academy coming into the city. Right now, they don't have a permanent home, but they're temporarily, I forgot the name of the church, but it's on 17th Street, kind of like across from the fire station there along Flower. And, you know, there, there's some classrooms there. And, and, and they're already going to start classes in, um, uh, you know, this uh, uh, fall. And, and by the way, just for the record, because you go there doesn't mean you get to go to USC. But, but, but USC is trying to get more inner city kids, more Hispanics, more, more students there. So the fact that USC is coming to Santa Ana, I think, is another good thing. And another positive development is the Nova Academy, which is also starting up uh, you know, here in the city. They're going to be over in the Civic Center area, and they're you know, going through plan check, and they're going through inspections and everything else, because they want to open up in a matter of a few weeks. And according to their construction people, they've got like a 10-day safety window. So it's a lot of overtime. It's a lot of weekends. But Nova Academy is going to come here. Um, and also another presence we have, and I'm happy that the new chancellor, Strupa, I don't know if you're the chancellor yet, but okay, he's a chancellor. And as soon as he gets Jim Doty to go run marathons, he's going to become the president. And, and, and the reason that's important is Chapman's another wonderful institution here in the county, and, and they have the old Martinez bookstore that many of us know down on Broadway, where he's taken that bookstore, and, 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 and he's uh, you know, going to be uh, turning basically like into a cultural center and use it to recruit students that go into Chapman. 
and, and talking about students and where they go, the Samueli Academy now has a stronger partnership with, um, with UC Irvine, and so there's a strong connection there. And as you look at all these connections, um, you know, it's people that make a difference. And, and as I look at, at, at things like the, um, you know, the Cultural Center from Chapman, you know, I look at the work that the Chases have done. And I know I think both, uh, you know, Ryan is here and Irv is here, kind of hides because he always likes to hide, but, um, but, but he's smiling now. Look, these are, remember how I told you that people don't give up, like Mike Hara? Doesn't matter what year, it's going to go up, and it is going to go up. Well, the Chases have that bug as well. They're, 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 they love Santa Ana. They make a big difference in Santa Ana. And so whether it's Downtown Inc. and, you know, Teresa Saldivar and the whole group, or, or Robert Escalante, or the restauranteurs, there's family that's making a difference um, uh, in, a, in a very, very, very big way. And as I look at, at, at a difference, Again, I said I can only talk about just the tip of the iceberg. I just want to talk about KidWorks for a moment. Um, and, and there's many, many wonderful nonprofits here in the city. But you know, KidWorks is an organization that's reaching out to the community. It's making a difference. They've had success. But the only way that we get more success is if they get more success. And right now, they're embarked on a $3.5 million campaign. I'm sure they're going to get there that basically is going to double um, you know, their ability to serve. And you know, there are so many kids here in the city and so much need here in the city that if everything got bigger, it still wouldn't be enough. Because every time KidWorks helps another kid, there's another kid behind that student needing help. You know, sometimes the waiting list is longer than, than the list of, uh, uh, of kids that are in some of these programs. And when I, th I look at programs like uh, you know, Think Together and Randy Barth and the great work that he's done over the years, I just want to figure out how do we make a program like that grow because there are unique elements to, to these different programs. You, know, you look at the Ron Simon Scholars, for example. You know, that's another program where they come in, they help kids, they intervene, they get them to stay in school, they get them to go to college. And, and, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to coordinate resources so that we reach out and we touch the entire city because the entire city can, can benefit from all these things. Now I want to talk a little bit about the Discovery Science Center. Um, look, uh, you know, I was back in Indianapolis recently with the U.S. Conference of Mayors and I got to visit their Science Center. And, and their center is number one in the country, but I don't really think so. Um, they, 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 they have a lot of land um, and, and, and a lot of activities and there's not as much to do in Indianapolis, and, 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 um, but, and I went through the center, and I'm telling you, our science center here in town is a whole lot more exciting. Now, we don't have the numbers they do because it's constrained. We have to figure out how to make it grow. More parking, maybe vertical parking, uh, you know, something different, because I'm telling you, if we had the ability to do more there at the get more people there, more people would come. Um, uh, with that, I just want to talk about how we're doing everything to go green. Um, you know, we're, we're recycling, you know, we're trying to encourage bike paths, we're trying to, you know, get, uh, uh, you know, more solar, uh, you know, hydrogen cars, um, you know, CNG, and our friends from Clean Energy are here, and all the great work that you guys are doing with, with uh, you know, with green energy. All that is very, very important. And uh, finally, let me just get to, to Bowers and to the streetcar, and then we're going to perform for you. Um, here at Bowers, uh, there's exciting things happening all the time. It is a museum that's on a national scale, and it focuses and, and deals with you know, the human experience in a very unique way. Uh, in the near future, we're going to have some exhibits from Our Lady of Guadalupe, the cathedral in Mexico City. I'm sure it's going to be a blockbuster. They're going to have, you know, works of art, uh, artifacts and such. And then right after that, we're going to do something with Frida Kahlo the, uh, in the Kahlo Museum. And I'm sure that's going to be another blockbuster. So whether it's the Terracotta Warriors or the, you know, the Silk uh, Road or, or, or an exhibit with the mummies out of Egypt via the um, uh, London uh, you know, Museum of, of, of England, 
I don't know if the Brexit's going to make a difference. Maybe we're going to get more exhibits from London, Peter, because they'll need extra money. But, um, but, uh, but we have a great partnership with the British Museum, and, and we're going to work to make that happen. Um, I also want to work to do what I can uh, to make the city a kinder, gentler way. And I know that's a difficult thing to talk about as we're going to campaign season because we're often not as nice during campaigns. But, but look, we have to be nice all the time. And in particular, uh, as we talk about you know, kids, uh, we have to be nice uh, you know, to the children. Uh, and in turn, you know, the children can be better people. And so recently, we passed a resolution back in, uh, in Indianapolis to try to get mayors across America to make their cities kinder. And when I went up to um, you know, May Mayor de Bazio, you know, because you know, New York, big city, eight million people, the guy gives you about three seconds, then he's got to move on. Um, you know, when I spoke to him, he, he, he kind of stopped. And I said, look, you know, you're an important mayor, it's a big city, if you can institute, by example, this kindness campaign to where you try to influence the culture. I'm not talking about big budgets. I'm not talking about mandating things. I'm just talking about how can we work together to make a difference. And I'll tell you here in, in Orange County, through the, the supervisors and through the uh, superintendent, we're trying to get a billion acts of kindness. You know, Tom's already done more than a million in Anaheim, just in the schools. And, and this is a campaign that we can all embark on. So the idea is if three million people in Orange County can do a billion, you know, through the schools, multiply that times uh, 300, about 300 million, give or take, nationally. So anyways, that resolution got passed. And now I understand Lady Gaga is going to tweak it. So that's bigger than anything we could do, right? Because now a lot of people are going to see it. And, and hopefully we all embark on this campaign of kindness and, and, and trying to create a better, a better world. And as we're trying to create a better world, I just want to end on transportation. Um, you all know that, you know, and I have several friends here that uh, are from the OCTA, the Orange County Transportation Authority, and thank you all for being here. It makes a big difference, and the work that we're doing there is very important because I think we're improving the county. We're changing. And, and recently we decided that we're not going to speed up Anaheim, and Tom was very happy about that, but, but Al and, 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 and Tim and others, I, I think, agree with me that we need to um, uh, look at that. Um, and, you know, how could I forget, you know, Garden Grove, because Garden Grove has been just a wonderful, wonderful partner with us on everything that we've done. Anyways, you know, we're doing the streetcar here in Santa Ana. We already are looking at the corporate yard. We're already ordering uh, vehicles. We have uh, like $125 million coming from Washington that are in Obama's budget. It's going to happen. The Orange County streetcar is going to happen. We're going to have a different mode of transportation. Um, I hope that you know, someday we'll hook up to L.A. because look at all the great things happening. L.A. wouldn't be moving today if it weren't for your, 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 your public transit systems that you've developed. We need that in Orange County. We're the fifth largest county in the country. Where if we were an, an economy, our own economy, we'd be about 35 globally, and, and yet we're lagging. So, so right now, um, I'm going to uh, you know, wrap for now, but I'm going to tell you that we're going to be performing three songs in a moment. And if Miguelito, five, if you're here, I hope they're here. Um, <laughs> if you can start coming forward, let me tell you what, what, what the songs are going to be, because they're interesting. First one's going to be called El Camión. That's about a bus, but you have to transport yourself back to like the 1930s um, in Mexico and realize that buses weren't like what we have at OCTA here today in Santa Ana. Um, you know, they, 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 they were rough, they, they, they had their own character, and so the song that we're going to sing is going to be called El Camión, but I don't see anybody coming forward, so I don't know what, I've got to keep talking. Um, um, but, 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 but El Camión, it talks about the, the bus. Ahí va el camión, you know, there goes the bus, corriendo con coraje, like, you know, it's got like fervor, it's got like energy. And then it talks about how, you know, you know during the rush hour, if you get into the bus, it's just a, 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 a victory, just because you were able to board it. So when we talk about, you know, buses that are over full, it's nothing like 1930s in Mexico. And, and, and once you get in there, you know, you'll see towards the end of the song a portion where my dad and I talk, 
and, and, and there he's role playing what happens inside the bus uh, as people argue uh, uh, about what goes on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep talking, but I'm going to let him move the podium, and, um, and then we're going to start our performance. Um, so that's the first song. Second song, I'm going to have Miguelito announce, because I won't be able to do as good a job as he and if I try to do something, he'll say, Dad, you know, that, that you messed up or whatever. So I'll let him introduce the, uh, you know, the second uh, song. And then the third song I like a lot because, look, there's a lot of inner mixing that occurs and cultures that clash and merge and create a new culture. And there's a lot of German in the Latin world. And what I mean by that is, you know, when the, um, you know, Tex-Mex movement developed and the, the accordion came in, that's really a, a German instrument, a Czech instrument. You know, the oompa oompa sound. So when I was young, my father, I heard him singing the uh, barrilito cervecero. It's, it's the, you know, roll out the barrel in Spanish. And I thought, God, I, I, I knew that as an English song. I didn't know it as a Spanish song. Well, it's embedded in the culture. And if you look where accordions are sold today, there's more accordions in northern Mexico and southern Texas because of the oompa oompa sound in those German roots. And so today, Enrique is smiling, but, 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 but he is our uh, friend who uh, plays music with us uh, regularly, and he's a wonderful accordion player. So he's going to be accompanying us. And then what I'll do is we'll start with the uh, El Camion. And then after El Camion, and by the way, every OCTA board member and every Santa Ana City Councilman and every Garden Grove City Councilman, later I'll get you the lyrics. You, got, you have to understand and feel this song. It's a, it's a wonderful song. So we're going to start with El Camion, Miguelito. Then you'll take it from there, and then we'll do El, el Barrilito. Yes, Michelle. <laughs> On my right. Oh, no. On my right is David Andres Pulido, David Andrew Pulido. Um, he is uh, 16 years old. He's a very, very happy person at this point in his life because he has a car. <laughs> and he has a license and he has insurance. And he just uh, can go places. So it's uh, a newfound freedom. Enrique, I already spoke about Enrique. Miguel, uh, there's not enough I can say about Miguel Robert. Uh, he's now uh, a sophomore, about to become a junior over at uh, Claremont College, Spitzer uh, College uh, specifically. Um, he studies a whole lot of things, and I'm really happy because he recently got an A in his summer school course, which was uh, Comparative Environmental Politics. Comparative Environmental Politics. <laughs> Just the title sounds like it'd be a lot of reading and a lot of papers, but he got an A. And then uh, my father, who's my inspiration, um, you know, he's, uh, he always rounds up. He always rounds up. So he's really 90, but he'll tell you he's 91. Um, <laughs> but um, he'll be, he'll be uh, in September, he'll be 91. And look, it's just, it's just a blessing. And, and I just tell all of you the same thing. Every good moment you can have with each other, enjoying your family, enjoying the kids, the grandkids, I know, you know, the Hurwitz know what I'm talking about. Everybody in this room knows what I'm talking about. Just, you know, take those magic moments because uh, they don't come back. And if you can take them and enjoy them, it just makes, uh, makes your life, uh, you know, so much more positive. And if, can, and if you can do good things at the same time, like I know my, uh, you know, Council Benavides, my colleague, and Councilor Sarmiento and Michelle and others that, you know, we give a lot of our time, a lot of our efforts. And, um, you know, Steve Jones, Al Murray, Tim Shaw, all of you, you know, Tom, you know, we, we all, uh, you know, give up of our time in order to serve others. But when we can be with our own family and just enjoy those moments, enjoy them because they're priceless. So with that, uh, El Camion. Habla. Bueno, bueno. No sirve. Este.
Este está más fuerte. De las cosas detestables que tenemos Los camiones son muy dignos de mención Hay de aquel que necesite sus servicios Porque debe hacer de tripas corazón Los choferes sin pensar que llevan gente Ponen frenos y se arrancan con furor Estrujando al pasajero de tal modo Que al bajar se causa lástima y dolor Ahí va el camión, 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 corriendo con coraje, y el conductor, el conductor y el cobrador, el cobrador, y el inspector moliendo a su pasaje. Otra late esa lluvia de inspectores que molestan al pasaje sin cesar. Cuando menos suben 30 en cada esquina. Y a la brava se abre el paso para entrar a la... Ya se me olvidó A la hora en que salen los empleados Es un triunfo encaramarse en un camión Y una vez que está uno adentro cual sardina Nunca falta entre nosotros la discusión Suben, suben, siguen subiendo Suben más, suben Atrás está vacío, pásenle, pásenle. Pero ¿dónde quiere usted meter más gente? ¿Cómo que dónde? Si este camión tiene capacidad máxima para 200 pasajeros. ¿200 pasajeros? 195 parados y 5 centavos. <risa> Caifás con su pasaje y pico de cera. Debe, deberían de mejorar su estable servicio. Voy, voy con la anciana, porque quería que por 10 fierros le dieran su cama baja y su radio. Me acaba de pisear lo que pisotón me dio, señor. Pues recojan los pedales, no ve que voy pasando. Suben, suben, bajan, bajan, siguen bajando, bajan más, bajan, bajan. Azotó la res. Vámonos. Ahí va el camión. Ahí va el camión. Ahí va el camión. Corriendo con coraje. Y el conductor, el conductor, y el cobrador, el cobrador, y el inspector moliendo a su pasaje. Dad came to me yesterday and said he wanted a song in English, so we're gonna we're here to give you a song in English as well, in addition to the Spanish one. And this is an old uh, Hank Williams country song, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. Tell what it's called. It's a surprise. <laughs> I didn't go I 
believe I blow my stuff. Well, I love you, baby, but you gotta understand that when the Lord made me, He made a rambling man. To ride these rails beneath God's blue sky, I will travel this land from the mountains to the sea, 'cause that's the life I believe He meant for me. And when I'm a god. You know how sometimes you're almost done, you forgot something. Um, I see Daryl Johnson back there, our executive director from OCTA. Somehow he's in the back row, but uh, thank you for being here. Uh, thank you, Daryl. He's doing a great job. At least OCTA board members ought to clap, right? All right, now we're going to do um, uh, roll out the barrel. And in, in the last version, we're going to do in English. We're going to do it in Spanish, but at the end, you all have to join in because you know the words, right? Roll out the barrel. We'll all have a barrel of fun. Roll out the barrel. We've got the blues on the run. Zing, zoom, a boom, Ferrero. Ring out the song of good cheer. Now's the time to roll the barrel for the gang's all here. So you guys got that, right? So, so we're going to do it twice. So guys, we're going to do the uh, English version twice, and then it'll be a wrap. So we're going to start it in Spanish. It's called Barrilito Cervecero, which is the barrel of beer. And again, because of the Germans, there's the accordion now in Mexico, but, and, and in Texas and all, but also Cerveza, you know, Negro Modelo, Corona, all those breweries, they originally came from Europe, but now... You know, they've got a Mexican touch to it, and it's part of that uh, mixing that occurs, and it's part of what this song is about, El Barrilito. <laughs> Barrilito, barrilito, barrilito cervecero Te acarició la pancita y muy suave te bombeo Una gorda y una flaca, con las dos me balanceo Alegre y optimista, salgo de jaleo Si me voy por ahí a parrandear Mi barril tendré que desinflar Yo no le puedo hacer traición Me voy con él de vacilón de francés, inglés o alemán para mi cara y lo mismo da lo malo es que yo sin él sin mi barril no puedo estar todos dicen que los tiempos se ponen color de hormiga pero a mí nada me importa si me llena la barriga una gorda y una flaca con las dos me balanceo Alegre y optimista salgo de cal Si me voy por ahí a parrandear Mi barril tendré que desinflar 
yo no le puedo hacer traición, me voy con él de vacilón. Fue mi suegra la que rompió mi barril, yo no sé qué me pasa, que hasta me siento morir. Brindemos tú y yo a la salud de los dos. Barrilito cervecero, yo me muero por tu amor. a barrel we'll have a barrel of fun come on Frank Bing goes around we'll hit the blues on the run Bing goes around ring out a song of the cheer now's the time to roll the barrel for the gang's all here you guys can sing louder than that all right, Chancellor Strupa, you, I want, we gotta hear, you're Italian, right? You know an Italian verse? Come on up, let's give the Italian verse, come yeah. on up. Rosa Munda, tutto il mio amore per me. Rosa Munda, Tutto il mio amore per me, più ti piaci, più da parlare non so, più ti guardo e più mi piaci, Rosa Munda. If uh, Daniel Strupa can sing it in Italian, you can sing it in English. So real loud, roll out the barrel. Here we go, ready? Roll out the barrel, we'll have a barrel of fun. Louder! Roll out the barrel, we've got the blues on the run. Sing zoom barrel. Ring out a song of good cheer. Now the time to roll the barrel. Cause the gang's all here. Bravo, thank you, thank you. Bravo. Thank you. And on that, thank you very, very much for attending. Let's have a great day and uh, God bless you all. Take care.
vas a olvidar Yo he tenido tanto tiempo ¿Para qué vas a olvidar? Si solo quiero tu amor
que han caído los esquemas de mi vida.
salidas. Yo he tenido tanto tiempo. ¿Para qué vas a olvidar? Si solo quiero tu amor.
caído los esquemas de mi vida. Thank you.